Hey, hey, welcome back. Uh, so it's uh, day number two uh, for this year's camp. Uh, I'm back here again with uh, Bob Schaefer. Bob, you want to say hi? Hi. Looking forward to doing our next game with you. Cool. Uh, speaking of uh, of games, Bob, you want to introduce what we're up to today? Sure. If you watch the videos in sequence, the first video, we did a coin collector where a, a piggy bank was catching coins or a thief to try to get to a target amount. And today we're going to do another logic game, one you're probably familiar with, uh, rock, paper, scissors, or as my daughter, my daughters call it, Rochambeau. I can't and remember. As you see on the screen, actually, uh, you're going to have the flexibility to pick any three images you want. Uh, we're going to design it today uh, a little bit differently than what you see on the screen, where it shows Frosty and Rudolph. Um, there was a, a Christmas-themed version of this game. You can pick any three characters you want, as long as it matches a certain cycle of defeats, which uh, Dave will go ahead and explain here in a minute. Yeah, so let's go ahead and um, look at the game, and uh, and again, I want to show the cycle of defeats thing first. So uh, normally in the game, um, rock beats scissors, scissors beat paper, and then paper beats rock. I've actually never understood why paper beats rock, by the way, but that's, that's my not... understanding. The way it was taught <laughs> to me is that rock can smash scissors. Yeah, well, that that again. Can cut. That so makes a lot of paper, sense. Yeah, I like that. And, and paper can cover rock. Yeah, but that doesn't defeat rock. That just well, rock. it suffocates it until it. <laughs> yeah, I know. And so the Best idea of this game is that um, you can use those three. In fact, I think we might in our demo today. Uh, but we want to show you that you could do anything you want. So the solution that we're going to look at is actually uh, different images, uh, just for fun. So uh, I made this first at a Christmas time thing, and so we had Frosty. And so Frosty would throw a snowball at Santa. So that's how Frosty would defeat Santa. Um, Santa would sit on Rudolph. So that's how Santa would defeat Rudolph. Uh, and then Rudolph would melt Frosty with his nose. So there's kind of like this same cycle uh, of one beats one uh, loses to the other, right? Uh, and the goal of this game is that you can do uh, whatever images you want. Um, and just for fun, Bob and I are going to do it with rock, scissors, and paper, uh, but just know that you can do uh, whatever you like to do. Uh, let's go ahead and show you a solution, uh, just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, I think I've got a link to the solution here. It was behind our heads. Um, and so the way this game works is it's a two-player game. Um, and so in order to have a two-player game, you both have to be sitting at the same keyboard. So Bob and I are obviously not at the same keyboard. Uh, one player gets the uh, the left arrow, the up arrow, and the right arrow. You only need three arrows. So it's um, up, uh, left, and right. Uh, sorry, I should that order wrong. So left, up, and right. Uh, and then the other person, whenever there's two people at the same keyboard, usually uh, we use the keys um, W, A, S, and D. Uh, so if you look at your keyboard, uh, hopefully we've all got a keyboard in front of us. If you look at W, A, S, D, they also kind of form kind of like a, a little number pad over there. So we're actually, of those, we're going to use the A, the W, and the D. And so it's going to be like your your rock, um, your scissors, or your papers, kind of the options. I'm going to show you a game uh, playing against myself, which is not really how it's supposed to work. All right, so <clears throat> when you hit spacebar, it does a little countdown. And so it's kind of like rock, scissors, paper, shoot. Um, I, didn't, I didn't shoot anything there. I'm going to shoot something this time. Uh, so I'm going to shoot with my person over here, Frosty. Uh, and Frosty, uh, and I chose to add a message, that's optional. Uh, it says why he won. So Frosty hit Santa with the snowball. Uh, if I was to play again, uh, I'm going to pick different things. I picked um, Santa for this player, player one, and he rides Rudolph. So you can see they're ahead two to nothing. Uh, and then if I do, I'll have them win again, why not? Uh, and then here, Fr Rudolph melts Frosty. So they're ahead three to nothing. Um, if they're real humans, they could, of course, throw the same thing. Uh, so here they both threw Santa, uh, so no impact. Uh, and just because player two hasn't won a single round, I'll have him win one. So uh, he threw uh, Frosty there. So it's a little uh, rock, scissors, paper game. It keeps track of total number of wins. You can play to as many as you want. You can play to 100 if you want. Uh, it doesn't ever stop you. It just kind of plays, uh, plays for good. So that's what we're going to build. Sound good? Make sense, Bob? Makes good sense. There's a few things I noticed that yeah. are going to be clever to watch you uh, code as we go along. Uh, there's that countdown timer, which is going to be interesting, obviously giving the 
players an opportunity to press those buttons and still having the program process that information but not doing anything with it until the countdown's done. And then I also found it interesting that you had to select the winning player. Whoever uh, won was the one that was actually saying, you know, how they won, what their defeat mechanism was. So it'll be fun to, to watch this play out. Cool. Yeah. And there's all these other little details. Whenever you get into games, there's little details. But you notice how they're facing each other too, right? Uh, oh. And so... If <laughs> I, I did notice the symmetry. Yes. Yeah. And so it's it's just like... You know, it just works, but uh, here it's two Santas, and you'll notice they face each other. So you're going to have to figure out how to make sure that they face each other and things like that, too. Uh, we, we're gonna... we, did the code, we did the code in the last game, and as you were showing that, it had me wondering, and I'm hoping some of our people that are watching these videos start thinking to themselves, how did they do that? Because I found myself thinking, is there a button? Is there a way to make the image uh, rotate? 180 degrees or, or to reflect across that axis. So it'll be fun to dig in and find out what Scratch can do for us. Cool. All right. So just fire up a, a new project. Uh, there's nothing, no starting code or anything. We're just uh, firing up a new project. Uh, I'm going to call mine. Wh which version do you like? Do you like calling it rock, scissors, paper, or do you call it rock, paper, scissors? I've always called it rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. And I mean, that's kind of backwards though, right? Because it goes rock beats. I know. I'm, I'm, I, every time you say rock, scissors, paper, it sounds awkward to me. But <laughs> I, I'm just telling you the way I've always heard it. All right, sounds good. All right. So let's start off. There's no cats in our game. Uh, so I'm just going to. Well, actually, I could delete the cat or uh, check this. Uh, I could go in here to his costumes and just delete the costumes because actually. What we're going to do is we're going to have um, a player one sprite that has three different costumes that you can put on, like rock, scissors, paper, for example. Uh, and then the other player actually has those same costumes, but maybe mirrored. Um, and so really I can use the cap sprite just fine. Um, I could just change his costumes. Uh, so I think that's what I'll do. If you've already deleted him, no big deal. You can add, uh, add the cap back. Um, it, if you're curious, by the way, Wikipedia suggests rock, paper, scissors, but says for those in Australia and New Zealand, they call it scissors, paper, rock. Scissors. Now that I've never heard. Scissors, <laughs> paper, rock. All right. So the first thing you've got to do is you've got to decide what do you want your images to be. Um, one way to get images is through the, uh, the sprite library. Uh, so I'll just show you that option. Um, Keep in mind, there's two buttons, which actually kind of look the same. There's um, this one on the left, which says choose a costume, and this one over here, which says choose a sprite. What I'm doing here is I am not making a new sprite. Uh, he's currently called Sprite 1. I'll tell you what, I'll just go ahead and change that. I'm going to call this sprite. Um, I'm actually going to do Player 2 first. I know that feels weird, uh, but I'm going to put him over here. It's so I can do the arrow keys first. I don't know why I just want to do the arrow keys first. Um, and then um, I'm going to set a costume on him. I'm going to show you one way you can get a costume. You can just click on the circle over here. Keep in mind I'm in the costumes tab right now. Um, or I can um, choose a costume. That's actually the same button, those two. I could paint one. If I wanted to just paint rock and paper and scissors, I could do that. I could get a random. Uh, or I could upload from a computer. And I'll show you all, 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 some, all of those options. So let's go ahead and choose a costume. Uh, there is actually a rock built in. Uh, I think it's rocks, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use uh, rocks, and this will get me uh, a chance to get rid of that cat now. So I'm going to use a built-in one uh, for rocks. Uh, the next is paper. Uh, paper uh, you could uh, get from the internet, uh, or you could draw it. Um, let's draw it. Does that sound okay, Bob? Sounds sure. Fun. Yeah, I love the idea of taking one that's built in, drawing one, and we'll find the third one from the internet. Yeah, and so this one, I'm just going to click on this option that says paint. All right, so I'm just going to paint some paper. Of course, uh, I was very willing to let you draw some paper. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> my uh, artistic my, abilities are not on display here. My paper is going to have uh, this drawing area. It takes some time to get good at it. Uh, you can zoom out and you can kind of like see how big it is. Uh, you know, you can zoom in um, and then you can just draw. So there's a paintbrush if you just want to freehand this thing. There's uh, lines. I'm an engineer, so I'm going to draw with lines, right? Uh, and so I'm just going to take it and just kind of put a couple lines up here. 
try to make them mostly straight. Uh, maybe I'll even make a couple of uh, red lines. You can change your colors. The way the colors work is it takes a little while. They don't use RGB like a lot of people do. They use this, it's what's called color saturation brightness or hue saturation values, the fancy words. It's kind of like you pick the color of the rainbow first, then you pick like how faded it is or how like true the color is, and then uh, whether it's bright or not as bright. So uh, I'm going to put some red lines on here. So I'm going to set my hue to pretty red, and then maybe I'll make them a little darker. Dave used an acronym there. An acronym is a, a set of letters that all stand for something. He said RGB because when you're programming, uh, a lot of times RGB is the standard way of doing that. Um, if you haven't heard that before, you may be able to think for a second about what RGB might stand for. Give you a second to think about it. Feel free to pause. Um, turns out that those are the first letters of three colors that you could then use to combine uh, to make all of the other colors that you might want to make. So it's red, green, and blue. So when you're programming and using colors, uh, that's the standard. You can pick levels of red, levels of green, levels of blue, and, and that's a standard way to see it. And, and what Dave was describing was that here in uh, making gorgeous paper, by the way, Dave, um, what uh, what you see in in this mechanism is, is not the RGB. It's instead a, a color saturation brightness scheme, which gets you access to the same colors, just a different way of doing it. So um, I didn't bother narrate every little thing that I did on, on coloring because it, it really is just whatever you would like uh, it to look like, right? And if you don't want to draw it at all, we're going to show you how you can just get something from the internet uh, next time. Uh, but I think I'm happy enough with that. Technically, it um, is transparent in the middle. I don't think that matters, but I'm going to see if I can fill it in with white. All right, so there. Mine is beautiful. Um, yours does not need to be beautiful. Don't, don't worry about beautiful. One thing that you might want to do, though, is if you look at the relative size compared to the rock, you can see that my paper is actually quite a bit bigger than my rock. If that bothers you, uh, one way you can fix it is you can just kind of like select everything, and then you can just make it smaller. Um, but you don't have to, right? So they're, they're relatively the same size. Cool. All right. And so I don't want to draw scissors. Uh, scissors, turns out there's no good scissors in the library. Uh, just to kind of prove that I could you know, type in the word scissors. Nope, no scissors. I have a squirrel. Uh, so I'm going to go to the internet for mine. Now, what you can do, uh, at this point, you can kind of pause and rethink what you want to do. You can pick any theme you want, right? So maybe you want like, a, I don't know, a, a Ninja Turtle and Shredder and uh, let's see here. So Ninja Turtle beats Shredder, Shredder beats mm, Kitten, Kitten beats Ninja Turtle. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but at any rate, I'm going to go get some scissors. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go search on the internet. Uh, which is always fun to do in a classroom full of kids, uh, for the word scissors. Uh, there's a couple tips and tricks that I want to give you uh, for how to get good images. Uh, one is after you do a search, some of the things will be images, but some will be text. I usually click on this word images next, and now they're all images. The next thing I like to do is I like to get images with transparent backgrounds is usually my preference. To do that, you click on tools, color, transparent. And so now it gives you things that should have transparent backgrounds. To be honest, like they're not all transparent backgrounds, but they should all have transparent backgrounds. You click on one, uh, whichever one that, that you think looks like a pretty good thing. Fair warning, don't get your heart connected to it because it might be a non-transparent background. So just have some flexibility as you're working. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to right click on it, uh, this, by the way, needs parents' help, right? So parents, if you're working with a five-year-old, just, yeah, you're doing this job, right? Uh, so right-click on it, say Save Image As, uh, and then you can save it to your computer. Uh, I'll just call it, um, I think I've already got one called Scissors, uh, so I'm going to call it Scissors 2. Great. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about file extensions. Most extensions on Google these days are... Um, W-E-B-P, it's a web protected uh, image. Uh, you can't upload a web protected image, uh, but to this day, uh, Scratch allows you, I don't know why, 
if you just change the extension, like this is like the craziest trick ever. So this is definitely a parent type of thing. If you just change the extension to PNG, uh, it, it works fine. I don't know why, but it does. All right, let's go uh, find where we're working, which is this one. So now what I want to do is I, I found an image from the internet. I made sure it's a PNG. Uh, I'm going to bring it in and hope it looks good, right? So I hover over really this. Really quickly, Dave, I'm yep. sorry. I noticed that when you typed in, just in case a parent is helping and aren't familiar themselves with changing names, it looks like you found the file yep. where it loaded it. You clicked on it to change the extension. And then at the end there, there was a pop-up window. I thought it said keep or use, and those sounded very similar to me, and you picked use. Yeah. Could you explain which one you picked and why really quick to yeah. the parents uh, that are So it was, uh, my Mac says that Windows will say something different, but basically it says, hey, you're about to totally mess up this file because you can't just change file extensions. Um, and so it says, hey, do you want to keep it as, as a, a WebP, like keep it and don't change it, basically cancel, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And then the other is, Proceed anyway, like like risk it, and so I, I do want to risk it. So yeah, good good question. Um, yeah, and on Windows, it probably will ask the same type of thing because the extension on a file yeah. is important. But <laughs> if you know what you're doing, you're allowed to change it. Now that I've said all that, let's see if it actually works. We might. Uh, <laughs> ah, we're on top of the OK button. <laughs> That's funny. All right, um, abandon ship. Move Dave and Bob. Now click on it again. Yeah, what we could see is uh, you trying to do that and then a bunch of things randomly getting selected. Oh, gotcha. So you couldn't actually see. But yeah, it wouldn't no, we let can't me. see you. So. It wouldn't let me easily hit the OK button because the uh, the image of us was on it. Uh, my, my I'm scissors, guessing what's recording sees us. My scissors came in great. Excellent. Um, yeah, the recording is what you see. Uh, so scissors are there. If they came in a little big, so mine came in a little big, uh, you can modify them. Uh, just to share more information, if it um, came in um, as an image, it'll come in in what's called raster mode. You'll notice my tools all look a little different. That means it's like pixelated. You can click on this button, convert to vector, um, and then your your tools like look clean again. Uh, and you can do silly things, like if you wanted to uh, to rotate it, you could do that. Uh, if you wanted to make it smaller, you could just grab the handle and do that. Uh, but you can do whatever whatever you would like to try to make it look good. All right, so I've got rock, paper, and I've got scissors. Kind of wishing I'd grabbed an open scissors now, but I'm not gonna not gonna fix it. All right, cool. So uh, pause for as long as you need, um, and you can get three images that you're happy about. Just make sure that one beats two, two beats three. And then three somehow comes around and beats one. Uh, oh, I do have mine in the wrong order. Which means we have to yeah. move ours. Means, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was on purpose? No? No. All right. Uh, so it needs to go rock beats scissors, scissors beat paper, and then paper comes back around to the top and beats uh, rock. By the way, you can change the names of them if you want, but it, it doesn't have any value, right? So I'm going to put in uh, paper, and I'm going to put in scissors, uh, I'm going to change this one to just the word rocks. Um, we're going to be. You may recall in the last video, if you watch them in order, that we referred to costumes by their numbers, yep. uh, which is exactly why Dave said it doesn't matter. And and uh, I'm actually glad that you ended up having them loaded in in the wrong order, so you could show just how easily you could move those around. You just clicked okay. on one, slid it up to the new spot, and and so if you at home while you're doing this don't have them in the right order, just select them, slide them, and get them in the right order. Cool. All right. I think that um, I'm ready to actually code something. <laughs> how many minutes into the video until you wrote a first line of code? Let's code. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to hit um, left, up, and right, and just switch to the correct image. So a pretty straightforward uh, start. Um, there's a couple different ways to do keyboard keys. Uh, one way that we've done it in the past is we've, in sensing, uh, we've used this if key is pressed, right? So that's one approach uh, that you can uh, use to do it. We're going to show you uh, another approach here. can't remember if we did that in the last one or not. Yeah, we did. We totally did uh, in the last one to use that approach. Let's show you another approach. Uh, this is uh, the events approach. Uh, in events, you'll notice that there's this when key space pressed. Uh, and, of course, the word space there has a, 
uh, white arrow drop down. So I'm going to switch this to my left arrow. So if I have a left arrow, I want to switch to the costume. Uh, switch to costume. And since we're just testing, you actually can use the name right now if you want. Uh, we're going to eventually use everything with numbers. Uh, so actually, I, so the name doesn't matter. The name won't matter because I'm going to delete this later. Uh, and so now if I hit left arrow, uh, then it'll just switch to uh, rocks, which of course it was rocks if it was something different. Uh, and I hit left arrow, it would switch to rocks. Interesting, I never hit the green flag, right? So the green flag is a very common way to start programs. We don't use it. We're not going to use it this whole thing. Isn't that kind of weird? Uh, just because the event can actually be other events as well. And so left arrow is an event. Uh, being a very lazy individual, uh, I could do that two more times. Or I could right click on it and say duplicate. And then I could right click on it again and say duplicate. And then I could just modify it, right? I don't know which is faster, uh, but whichever way is easier for you uh, works for me. So I'm going to switch this next one to my up arrow. So it's like left because it's the leftmost and then up. It's going to be my second one. And then right is going to be my third one, which for me is paper. So one, two, three. All right. I just want to see if that works. Left arrow. No change. Uh, up and right arrow. Left, up, right. Left, up, right. Mine's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob, I feel like we need a backdrop. What do you want our backdrop to be today? I don't oh, like this boy. clearness. I don't know. Let's go look at some Let's options. Go look. Let's go look. This is something where everybody can just kind of pick with their own uh, flexibility, whatever jumps out to them. Um, I don't know. Do we want to be doing this in space? Do we want to be doing this? Uh, I was thinking in space. In space, you were? All right. Yeah, there's so a couple space want, themes down there. Do you want there's nebula or do you want galaxy? Well, there's nebula, or galaxy, moon. there's the moon, and then you scroll down just a little more. I think there were ones that were actually called space. A space Stars. city, spaceship. Yeah, there's All right, you lots pick of it. options. Uh, Ooh, are you going to be able to see them in nebula? Nebula look, looked cool, but the other cool. thing you think about is, are our images going to look good Let's just test in it. this space? So now you can bring it in and test. I can see the rocks, I can see the scissors, I can see the paper. Cool. I think that's going to work just fine. A galactic... Rock. Rock, paper, scissors. I'll say scissors, paper, because that's the way you ordered it. <laughs> <laughs> and we can all agree that paper looks the best of my images. Oh, by far. Yeah, indeed. All right, let's do some <laughs> uh, Let's do some more stuff. Uh, so the way these uh, games work is, you know, you got to figure out what needs to happen, and then you got to figure out how to make it happen. Uh, we could go look at the solution again, but the first thing that occurred to me is uh, there's supposed to be like a countdown, right? So like a three, two, one. So let's... Let's do the countdown. Uh, the way we did it over here, uh, and the way we'll do it is uh, when you press the space bar, um, it shows a sprite, actually, the sprite for three, uh, and then two, and then one. Now, if you think about it, there's actually only one sprite with a few different costumes. Uh, so there's a costume for the three, for the two, and then the one. Uh, and then it's either shown or hidden, which is kind of neat. So when I hit space bar, it does its little countdown thing, and then it goes away again. So that's kind of what we're going to go for here. All right, so those are built in. Uh, so I can actually just click on this button uh, right here that's, uh, that, does that hurt, Bob, whenever I do that ribbon into you? Sorry. It shoots a ribbon into your head. I uh, Hopefully not. All right, so I'm going to click on, <laughs> click on that. I'm going to start typing in the word numbers, uh, and it looks like I got some numbers. So I'm going to grab the number three. Um, that's going to be one of the costumes uh, for the sprite. So right now it's called Glow 3. That's not really a very good name because it's going to have a bunch of numbers. I'm going to just call it Counter. Uh, I just like to name it better just for fun. And then if I go on Costumes over here, I can see that it's got this Glow 3. And then now I do not want to click on this button again because that would make a new sprite. I want to click on this one because it's going to have another costume. I want to add the costume for 2. It's like putting on his Superman cape. Two. And then I want to add a costume. For I just always search for the word numbers. You know, I really have to type. If I type just an N, N U, N U is about all the more I got to type. Uh, great. So it's going to be able to say three, two, one, uh, and then you'll you'll fire. 
I think the costumes are in good shape. Uh, I think what I want to do next is write some code. Uh, and if you want to make them a little bigger, you can, but I think I'm okay with it. Uh, the code that I want to write. So first I need an event. Uh, the event is space bar clicked uh, is what we're doing this. So no green flags, just for fun. So sorry, green flag. We'll see you another day. Uh, space bar pressed. And then what needs to happen is uh, we need to show the costume for the three. Uh, wait a second. Show the costume for two. Wait a second. Show the costume for one. Uh, and then we'll hide it. Um, and we're also going to have to do something with broadcast events, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, let's go into looks. That's going to give us our costumes. Uh, and I'm going to switch to costume. I want to start with a three. And then I'm going to go to control. And I'm going to wait for a second. By the way, I could run this code, and I run it not with the green flag. I was going there, but I run it with spacebar. And so now it says three. Now we said to wait for a second, but it looks like it stayed up. That's because there was no other code. So let's put some more code. So then we'll switch to costume two. And then we'll wait for a second. And then we'll switch to costume one. So three, two, one. And we'll wait there for a second. And then, oops, I lost it. Uh, and then what we do after that is we hide. Now I'm getting ready to cause a problem. See if you can figure out what problem I'm about to cause. All right, let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. So if I press the space bar, three, two, one, and then it goes away. Perfect. Perfect, isn't it, Bob? Yeah, uh, once <laughs> Press the space bar again. Yeah, space bar. It oh, didn't... Uh, it, I don't see anything. <laughs> I don't see anything. Oh, this is interesting. It actually is changing right here. That's cool. Uh, so, You're seeing it where? Where is that? That's right here. I don't know if you can see this. Did you see it right Oh, there? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of neat. It's changing there. Uh, see if you can figure out how to fix this bug. Pause me for a second. See if you can figure out how to do it. All right, hopefully you, you see it. But if you hide something, you, you sure better show it some other time, right? So we need to show... Where do we need a show? We need a show right up top. So I'm going to add a show uh, right up top. Cool. So oh, I did it. I hit the space bar. I was going to say, right. by default, Three. up to the green flag. I did. Cool. So every time I hit the space bar, it does this. And then I can uh, simultaneously be showing uh, these things over here. So now, now we're ready to kind of do some more. So think about what's happening here. So when we hit the space bar... And I decide, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to totally throw a rock on them. We've got a problem, right? Uh, the problem is, is during that 3, 2, 1, if I decide, oh, I'm going to throw paper, that's going to get them. They, they can see the paper, right? Not so going to get them. I, I can play rock, scissors, paper against Bob, but if I just hold out the scissors in advance every time, he, he's probably, he's probably going to get me, right? So we need to fix that. So that's our goal. So our goal is uh, when the end of the countdown is done, uh, we're going to broadcast an event to both players. We only have one player so far. We're going to broadcast, like, show show yourself, right? So uh, play or show or whatever you want. So let's go ahead and add that broadcast event onto here. Broadcast events, it's in the event section. Find where it says broadcast uh, message one and just stick it right at the bottom. Message one is not a very good name for this. Uh, I think I'm just going to change it to a new message. Uh, I kind of liked a show okay with you, Bob. Show. Oh, sounds great. I guess we could call it, um, sometimes Reveal. people call it shoot. Is that what they do? Shoot. One. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yeah, yeah that's sure. shoot. So I'll do, I'll do shoot. Uh, great. Uh, OO, right? Yeah, I think it's OO. All right, yeah. so I'm going to broadcast shoot. Now over here with the player, uh, I want to make some changes to it. So first off, I want to listen for shoot. So I'm going to have when I receive shoot. And when I receive shoot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my appropriate costume at this time, right? And then I'm going to show. So I'm going to switch to my costume and show. And whenever they, whenever they do these things, I'm going to actually set a variable instead. So I'm actually going to take all these off. They were good for testing. I like that. Uh, but we're going to need to use a variable. 
So let's do this. Let's go into variables. Uh, and we're going to use uh, four variables total is, is our end goal. Um, let's go ahead and make, uh, we'll make a couple of them. Uh, maybe we'll make all four. So click on make a variable. So we're going to have to have a player one costume. That's for the other guy. We're going to have to make a variable for a P2 costume. I wrote P just because I didn't want to bother to type the word player. And so I've kind of got a costume set for both. Uh, and then we're also going to need to be able to keep score as well. Uh, oops, I don't know why that's uh, popping up over there. Uh, let's go ahead and make the scores just while we're over here. So uh, make a variable P1 score. And then another variable or final variable P2 score. And then I'm going to arrange them to where the player one score is kind of on the player one side and the player two score is kind of over here. Now these uh, player one, player two costumes, do we want to show these or should, do we want to hide these? Oh, I as player one yeah. would certainly love to see player two's yeah. costume. Indeed, because that, that would defeat the purpose. So we will hide those, but let's show them just while we're developing and then we'll get rid of them. Does that sound okay? All right, so we know that these costumes at the top, those are going to go away. Only the scores uh, are going to remain. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, set these variables for these arrow keys. So for left arrow, I'm going to set. I don't care what it was before. I'm just going to set. And the thing I'm going to set is the player 2 costume. And I'm actually going to set it to the number 1. Because if you remember, he's got costumes that are called 1, 2, and 3. So left arrow is going to go to costume one, and then I'm going to set player two costume to a two in that case, and then I'm going to set player two costume uh, to a three in this case. So one, two, or three. Now you can still play, uh, and you can see that it changes up here. So there it's a one, so you can tell what I'm hitting. Um, Except for we're going to only show it when they receive shoot. Oh, by the way, we should also hide. Um, when they hit the space bar, if you watch this one over here, when I hit the space bar, you'll notice the, the players hide during that time. And then when shoot comes, that's when they, they come out, right? So I'm actually going to need a fifth event. I want to listen to space bar as well. When I get a space bar, I hide. I did it just a little quick, but you can always pause the video if I did it too quick. Uh, so when I press space bar, I hide, so I can test that. So I press space bar and it, it hides it. And then when shoot comes, I don't currently do anything, but I need to. Um, one thing I need to do is I need to show, and then I also need to set the correct costume. I'm going to set the correct costume first and then show. That's just how I think it's going to look best. So I'm going to go into looks switch to costume and instead of using the number i'm going to use that variable p2 costume so switch to costume uh, it's in variables so i want to grab p2 costume so that one right there all right we now have a one player version <laughs> so if i hit spacebar and I put in uh, the rock. It didn't work. Well, it didn't work. Oh, I forgot to put show on there. That was a goof. Show. All right, trying this again. Space bar. I hit the left arrow. Rock. Super. Space bar. I'm going to hit the up arrow. Scissors. All right. Space bar. Right arrow. Paper. Rock. Scissors. Paper. Sweet. Going good. Now we got a choice to make. Uh, we can either duplicate this player now um, and kind of like put him to where there's two of them, or we could keep writing some more code before we duplicate. I'm going to recommend that we write some more code uh, before we duplicate. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll be happy about this. Maybe I won't. Uh, but I think we're going to write the if statements uh, before we duplicate. All right, so uh, maybe good time for a break. Take a little break. 
Uh, we're going to get into some uh, some complex F statements, uh, and we'll see you back here in just a minute. All right, so hopefully you took a little break. Uh, let's get right back into it. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to see if we won, uh, we're going to score those points. So we're going to check for the situations where we are the winner, right? And so uh, if they're the winner, they can worry about that. If it's a tie, we're not worried about that either. We want to know if, if I just won, right? So when I receive shoot, I show my own costume. That's the first part. And then I want to see if I won. To see if you won, we need an if statement. So come over to control uh, and find an if statement. Now this if statement's going to be a little complex. It's not, it's not terrible. Uh, you can probably say it in words, uh, which is a good first step, and then we'll code it. So if I am costume number one, which for us happens to be rock, um, and they are costume number two, that's one way that I can win. So I win if I'm one and they're two. So how do we code that? Uh, if you go into the purple area, the operators, you can see that there's an and statement. So I'm just gonna set this kind of down here at the bottom. I'm eventually gonna put it in there. I'm just, whenever I kind of plan, I, I like to put it outside. So if I'm costume one, so it's gonna be an equals sign. I'm just gonna put it out here for now. If I am equal to one, and their costume is equal to two, that's how I'm gonna win. All right, so I've gotta put in this, this part of the white circle. So I, these are the variables. So if my costume is one and their costume is two, if that happens, that's one of the ways I can win. Sound good? So that this is specifically, I am rock and they are scissors, is what this one is. So now I'm gonna combine this. Uh, getting good at combining is important. Uh, just think about the left tip, right? Um, and then if you move it, you have to like grab it by the word and. Uh, and if I move this, I have to grab it by the equal sign, right? So you move it from the middle and then you drop it in with that left tip. Um, and I made that look pretty easy. And then I'm gonna grab it by the and symbol and then I'm gonna move it up here. One of our more complex uh, if statements. So if I'm one and you're two, uh, then I get a point. So I'm going to give myself a point. So I'm going to change. One, one, one quick change here, I think. Uh, you said if I'm one and they're two, but you are coding for player two right now. Oh, so good think, call. Good call. I think you want your variables swapped. Bob saved the day. There's a thing called pair programming, and there's a reason that pair programming is good. If I, and I am two, because I that's right, I am two. Thank you so much, Bob. If I'm one and you're two, that means I win. Excellent catch. Uh, so I'm going to change my score by one. By the way, I never reset the score. So at some point, I probably ought to reset the score. So we'll have to figure that out. But I'm going to change it. So I'm going to change um, the player two score by one. Cool. All right. I also can trash talk. Trash talk is optional. I don't I don't care if you want to trash talk or not. I'm going to trash talk. So I'm going to go into looks and I'm going to say a little smack. I'm going to say rock beats paper. Or wait, rock beats scissors. Rock beats scissors. You can think of it as trash talk, or you can think of it as a helpful explanation. Okay, that's fine, too. <laughs> Whichever you find most fun, yeah. So this is the rock beat scissors. The exclamation points might make it more trash yeah, talk. Yeah, a little more trash talk. <laughs> uh, by the way, I would like to test this. It's kind of hard to test until I've got an opponent. You could wait until you've got an opponent to test it. Uh, but just to show you, there's all kinds of tricks, like... When you get into coding, you'll start to learn all the little tricks of the language and the tricks of your tools. Um, if I wanted to set his value to be one, like before he even existed, or no, I want to set him to two, one trick you can do is you can actually right click on him and change him to a slider. And then you can move the slider and you can actually change his value uh, to the thing that you want, right? So if I'm, if I'm good, I can actually just set him to two uh, right now. So I can actually play. So I hit space bar and then I'm gonna hit left arrow because I'm gonna get the win it didn't work why did it work because I changed the player one score oh man that was a goof all right player one score back to zero 
Aims the wrong thing. I meant to set his costume to a two. There you go. Cool. By the way, the slider by default it goes to 100. If you're having trouble getting the two, you can also right click on it and you can change the range. Uh, you could change the range from one to three, and then it'd be a lot easier to uh, to set it, right? All right, got to test again uh, and hopefully do it right this time. Space bar. I'm going to throw costume rock. Sweet, rock beat scissors. If he was something else and I fire my good old rock, rock wins every time, uh, it doesn't say anything here. So this is actually a game where I rock against rock. Right, so it didn't actually play anything. Let's put them all in there. So this is just going to actually kind of, only have yep. one situation coded. He could have tried yep. uh, any of the other. Well, I'll let you figure that out quickly if you want to pause and think about how many different combinations are there. Player two can be three different things. Player one can be three different things. So how many different combinations are there? Um, go ahead and pause it and come back if you'd like. Some people might say six, and it's a logical thing to do to add those numbers, but you actually want to multiply. You can think about if I'm rock, they can be all three. That's three. If I'm scissors, they can be all three. That's three more. And if I'm paper, they can be three. That's three more. So you're actually multiplying uh, the two numbers. So there's nine total combinations, and you might have heard it earlier. We're going to code three of them for player two because those are the three scenarios player two wins. Uh, we're going to code three of them for player one, the three scenarios where player one wins. And I'm guessing we won't do the other three because yeah, it's just, just a tie. Just nothing will happen. That'd be great. <laughs> nothing, just nothing's going to happen. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to do uh, two more of these. So I'm actually way too lazy to do that whole thing from scratch. I'm going to right click where it says if. Uh, by the way, people in Chromebooks, they have to two finger click. That's how they right click. But uh, I'm going to right click and say duplicate. Stick it down here. And then I'm going to right click on the second if statement and say duplicate there. By the way, if you did the top if statement, you would accidentally have four of them. Well, I only need three. All right, and then I'm going to modify them to be correct. So if I'm one and you're two, that's a win. If I'm two and you're a three, that's a win. And if I'm, you just figure out what's left. If I'm three and you're one, those are the ways I win. And then you, now you do have to change your trash talk. So this is when I am scissors. So scissors, I guess you could even say the words, right? It's so like rock smashes uh, scissors. Uh, scissors uh, cut paper. And then uh, paper, Bob, Bob claims that paper covers Covers, rock. Uh, yeah, that's what I've always heard. And I think when I looked up the order of the words, that's what Wikipedia confirmed. Cool. All right. I so, mean, you had you had uh, Santa riding Rudolph. So yeah. <laughs> I think that this is about the equivalent of coverage. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. All right. Uh, I could test them all, uh, or I could do the other side. So I could, um, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll put this guy at three, and then I'll throw a number two. Um, and by the way, if you wanted to, you can actually throw the two early. So watch up here. So I'm going to throw the two right now. That's just like saving it. Like that's my plan for next time. So you actually can put it in early if you want. So I put it in before the one, two, three. And so it came out with scissors. Scissors cut paper. Cool. Let's check the last one. So he's going to be rock. And I'm going to plan to be, I got to beat him with paper. So I'm going to be three. So if I am three, I put it in early. It doesn't show it because it only shows it when the shoot happens, right? So you can actually put it in before the one, two, three, if you want. Um, so you can change it in this if you want, or you can just leave it what it was before. Paper covers rock, awesome. And your P2 score was changing each time. Yep. So now cool. we've accumulated three wins. Got three wins, which is great. Uh, there's no way for me to lose. Uh, this is like the greatest game in the world because I can't lose, but I'm also not playing against anyone, which is kind of lame, right? Um, so I think that uh, it's quite a bit of code. I, I get that. Uh, but I think that it's going to be really easy to do player one because there's only like a few certain things that change. Uh, and so here's what I want to do. I want to duplicate this player. So I'm going to right click right here and say duplicate. It named it player three, which is no good. I actually kind of want to move it over here too. I'm going to rename it to player one. 
And now you can see that if I click on player two, he's got the same code as player one. It's actually kind of confusing because like this screen didn't change at all, right? So come into player one and it's like, it's the exact same, but it's also everything is different, right? So it's, so it's the same, but different. All right, so let's, I mean, I'll talk, pause it, see how many of them you can figure out, right? So see how many you could, uh, how many you can change. It's a lot. All right, I'm gonna dive in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is basically everywhere I see a P2, uh, that becomes P1. Uh, and then everywhere I see a P1, that becomes a P2. So it's just like a, it's like a mirror, right? So these first three are easy. P1 costume, P1 costume, P1 costume. I don't want left arrow anymore. Uh, my left arrow is going to be the A. Uh, I don't want up arrow anymore. I want W. Uh, and I don't want right arrow anymore. I want D. And those are kind of weird. I get that. Uh, if you've ever played a video game that uses WASD, it'll, it'll feel more natural to you. But this way, one person will be over here, and the other one will be on uh, the arrow keys. All yeah, right, if now, you're wondering why the S wasn't used, because it's right next to A, it's because of what Dave just described. If you look over at the arrow keys, you'll notice that that center bottom key is the one that S represents. The down arrow is, is usually what S uh, represents for the left hand. So. Yeah. I suppose we could have used uh, left, down, right, and then A, S, D, but yeah, it's okay. We're <laughs> done now, right? All right, so I gotta make some more changes. Um, the next change I gotta make is these uh, variables. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull them all out. Um, maybe that's the best way to do it, maybe it's not. Uh, because some of them I'm gonna be able to reuse, right? Just slide over. You should yeah. be able to slide those right over, right? Oh yeah, actually, it's a good point. Yeah, I can just slide it right over there. Yeah. He's gotta be really careful that things uh, hit the right spots. And then, of course, the open gap, I'm gonna put the P2 costumes. And so, by the way, now, if I were to hop back and forth between the two, you would see uh, the, the changes, right? So, I'll zoom differently as well, but. Um, so if I'm one and you're two, uh, I can beat you. And I've still got this one hanging out over here, so I'm just going to have to grab one. Uh, P1 costume. So that goes right here. It takes a while to get them all, right? So uh, make sure, just pause it and just kind of look. A1, W1, D1, P1. Oh, here I missed these. Uh, I want to change my score, P1 score. I want to change P1 score. I want to change P1 score. Cool, I think I got them all now. Now, if we were to run it, uh, there's still a few things that need to be tweaked, but we're getting super close uh, to a finished game. Uh, one thing is player one's kind of hanging out up here. I want player one to be over here. Also, uh, depending on your images, you may want to, you know, we talked about mirroring them. You may want to mirror them. I don't know if I really care uh, in mine, but if you if you do want to mirror them, there's a cool little button right here, flip horizontal. And so I can mirror that one, I can mirror that one, and then I can mirror that one. That looks kind of weird to me. Does that look weird to you? I was going to say, I would, think, yeah. I would think the scissors for sure, paper not at all, and then rocks option. Yeah, so rock, yeah, so scissors, I like scissors, like, uh, that'll yeah, look better. Pointing towards, yeah. Rock, you're right, rock just doesn't matter. Indifferent. Uh, matter. But paper, paper, the way I drew it, I kind of got to do it. Yeah, I, I like, I like the decisions made. All right, so, oh, the other thing that we got to do, let's play it first. Uh, we've got to reset the score, right? So if we play again, um, player two is just already way ahead. Uh, we've also got to hide these things. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to play and just kind of test a couple things. Now, since you can see what I'm going to throw, you can actually see just before it comes out, I set this to one, I set that to two. All right, let's see if I can, so that was good. That was a player one win. I'm going to try to give them a couple wins. You can see visually what I did there. Scissor cuts paper. And paper covers rock. Sweet. I think we got it. All right, finishing touches is all we got. Uh, resetting the scores. You can reset the scores in a number of different ways. You don't want to do it on spacebar. Maybe this we could use the green flag for this. 
Um, and you could anybody could do it. Uh, you could do it on player one. Uh, they could they could do this task. Player two could do this task. The counter could do this task. Or if you wanted, the backdrop could do this task. So Bob, where do you want to put it? I'd uh, probably not player one or player two. Uh, you yeah, could do I would normally do it wherever I did the other. The, the okay. counter is kind of seeming like the the umbrella. Sound like the referee, right? Yeah, so, yeah so, exactly. Right. So we'll so, do it in here. The, so we'll go to events. Uh, when the green flag is clicked, we're going to set the variables of player one score to zero, and then we're also going to set the variable player two score uh, to zero. That's great. And you said there are a couple different options there. I'm assuming you were just thinking we could have coded a different button. Maybe you wanted to do R for reset yeah. or something like that. Yeah, so you could do yeah, R, so. you could you put it on a different place, uh, anything like you could also set a default costume of one if you wanted, but you don't have to, right? It could just stay with whatever it was before. Uh, speaking of which, I want to hide these as well. So these two up here that show the costume, if you want to hide them, all you got to do is you have to uncheck that box. If you it's uncheck... It's not a bad idea. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think it would not be a bad idea. When I first saw you start the game, uh, those started as zeros. Okay. If you were to, I mean, I'm guessing if you were to leave this code and come back to it, it may remember, but um, if you had a zero in there, it would try changing the costume to zero, and then I don't know what Scratch would do. It would probably just show nothing. But yeah. then there'd be no way for the other player to win. Yeah, that's true. Do uh, you want to set them to one by default? Uh, sure. So we'll just set a default of one, uh, and we'll set another default on this guy of one. And there are things like that that you add to your game. There's like, you know, it either does nothing or it is helpful. Either way, it doesn't really matter. By the way, if it annoyed you that it has this my variable up here, you can delete variables. So my variable, you can right click on it and you can actually say delete this my variable variable. Now, keep in mind these other two, these P1 costume, P2 costume, don't delete those. We definitely need them. We just don't want to show them to the whole world, right? Those are secrets, right? Uh, and I think we've got to finish game. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play it a couple times. Uh, sorry that it's not easier for uh, for uh, us to play together, Bob. So I'm going to no, hit okay. space bar. I'll uh, imagine what player one's doing. Cool. And so there it's uh, a win for player one. Uh, I'm going to throw author double scissors. It's true, we haven't tested, haven't tested the tie scenarios, cool. but Nothing happens. we didn't code that to do anything. Yep. We didn't have anywhere in our code did we have if player one costume is two and player two costume is two. So this was uh, just going to fall through the crack as do nothing. Cool. Uh, and you can go through and you can test them all, uh, but it's more fun to probably like have a human uh, that you test it with. Man, that paper looks beautiful. Rock smashes scissors. Great. I've tested um, enough of them that I feel pretty good about it. Uh, I'm ready to go get somebody to play against, and you should go get somebody to play against as well. Uh, you can also uh, publish your work uh, to put it up there for others to see. Uh, this is the share button. You do have to have uh, been signed in, uh, and you have to have validated your email address, I think, before to let you uh, do things. But it should say your project is now shared. Uh, now this website, uh, you can share it with anybody you want. Uh, if you can, if you want to, you can come to my game uh, right now. I think that's pretty good. Uh, we'll have to add this uh, project to the slides, Bob. I think this is uh, a pretty good one. So this is a demo yeah. solution, and then another demo that we made uh, together because this one is uh, is fantastic. Cool. I think it was good. Uh, brought ourselves back to the slides. I suppose that's a good thing. Uh, so what were the goals for today? Uh, we were hoping to get variables. Uh, we're pretty good with that. Uh, the counter, a countdown timer, broadcast events, uh, complex conditionals. We got that. Uh, changing costumes uh, and converting like everyday concepts. This is an everyday game uh, into code, which is which is really neat. Uh, so hopefully, uh, after you did this one, uh, you were successful. Uh, you can go back and look at things if you if you had problems. Uh, but you should realize that coding is pretty fun. Like you can do some fun things, uh, and you can do this, right? Uh, so this is a two-player game in Scratch. You can have two people at the same keyboard is the best way to do it in Scratch. Uh, making everyday games 
Uh, and we always solve it by uh, taking these big problems and breaking them into to little pieces. Uh, Bob, you got any closing thoughts for this one? No, I hope you enjoy playing the game. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the flexibilities you have. Maybe you'll come up with something random and interesting like dragon, I don't know, <laughs> magic wand and uh, wizard. I don't know. There's a lot of different uh, variants of rock, paper, scissors that are out there. But we hope you have fun with it and uh, look forward to the next video. Yeah, I think I did uh, dinosaur, cat, uh, bug. Because uh, bug like poisoned the dinosaur head or something. Okay. Like that, right? so, all right. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>